Welcome to another big story. I am Sean Rose. It's great having you this time and for this uh, major edition of the big story we have two guests from the Brigado Flax Educational Center on Virgin God. Uh, big things are happening at BFEC. Uh, to tell us about these major developments we have teacher Wilma George. Uh, we'll hear about her teaching background and so forth. And uh, we have an 11th grade student, back in the day we said fifth form student, uh, Kia Hodge. We're going to hear about her student experience at BFEC. And I, I get the impression that they have some very interesting uh, things to share with us. Ms. George, welcome. Hodge, welcome. Thank you. Let's, let's start with you as the teacher. What's the latest, the most recent big development at BFEC that you can share with us? Well, I believe um, in answering that question, I would have to say that the big story, of course, is that we have a new captain at the helm. We have a new principal, Miss Glenda Stevens, and um, it's been a interesting, what, a, about three months, um, but very much I would say that we are heading in the right direction. Our school is making some positive changes and I believe that we have a very bright future ahead as we move forward at this point. That sounds good. Maybe we might come back to this uh, atmosphere at BFEC with a new principal later on. Yes. But before we go to Kia Hodge, give mm -hmm. us a snapshot of your teaching experience, your background and so forth. All right, um, I studied at the University of the Virgin Islands. I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in elementary education with a concentration in English. I spent one year at, well rather in St. Croix, where I taught at a private Christian school, um, second grade, and then I moved to the BVI in 2005 when I got married. and. I initially taught at Brigado Flax Educational Center Secondary Division as a substitute teacher. It was the kind of the only position that was available at that time. I couldn't get into primary, so a substitute position became available at secondary. I took the job and I've kind of grown into it. Grown into wow. the position at um, secondary school. I spent a year there and then I was transferred to Tortola at Elmore Stout High School where I had a brilliant six years um, and then I came back to BFEC about three years ago and so I've been teaching this is my 11th year in the system. Wow that sounds remarkable we have to give teachers much credit you know teaching is not an easy job especially when you have students like Sean Rose. Now, <laughs> Kia Hodge I hope you're not uh, a troublesome student as I was no, I'm not. Uh, but I, I do sense that you are a very diligent student like I was Tell me about your experience at BFEC so far. What, what is it like for you in the 11th grade in particular? It's a great, it's a great. Yeah. You, you will tell me great, but you have things that you're not telling me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what happens on a, on a given day for you at given. school? Yeah, what is it like? Oh, well. I'm sure you, I'm sure you, you want to share with us because you have a lot of friends at school. Yes. Now, let me rephrase the question. Is BFEC different to Elmo Stout High School? Yeah, I would say, yeah, I would say that because we have a small school population, so um, we know each other very well. All right. And that gives me the, the impression that students would share experiences and knowledge a lot as well. Are you involved in group study? Yes, I am. I am a part of the school's debate team. I am also a part of the school choir, and I participate in inter-house sports. Why are you involved in all these things? You should just be focusing on your academics, not so? Not really. I just want to be involved. And it helps you to grow as an individual? Yes. We'll get back to that uh, involvement in debating in particular a bit later on. Thank you very much, Ms. Hodge. So, uh, back to you, Teacher George. Um, BFEC, I understand that uh, coming from Ms. Hodge there, it's a small community and that's mm -hmm. understandable. The Virgin Garda community, of course, sticks to, uh, together on many issues. How do you respond to people who ask whether or not you like teaching at BFEC? Well, my answer would be definitely yes, um, for several reasons. 
one of which is, um, like I said earlier, I spent six years at Elmore Stout and it was a great experience. I learned a lot. Um, I had opportunity for leadership and I met some really great people, people that are friends to this day. Um, but what I really longed for and wanted was to be able to be working in the community in which I live. And so if I have to say anything, that's my first reason for liking teaching at BFEC, is I get to work in the community in which I live. And of course, as Kia mentioned, um, it's a very small school population. And so I, in a sense, I think that we're very close knit. You know more of the students, whereas at a bigger school, the population is larger. You don't know all the students. Um, you may not be able to get as well acquainted with the students. And even in terms of interacting with parents, it may not be as readily accessible as, you know, in Brigado Flax, where we have a smaller school population. Right. Um, I believe at the core of BFEC, we have teachers that genuinely care for our students. Um, not to say that that's not present at other schools, right. um, but we, we have a group of teachers who really do care, genuinely care about the progress of the students and look out for them. Um, you can definitely see that there's positive relationships going on between teachers and students. Um, we're not void of our conflict and our issues, but for the most part, I think that we work well together. And we do have some more gelling to do, but I believe all of that is in the process and it's going to come. Well, this BFEC media outreach is, I'm sure, very uh, timely and a number of people watching would enjoy and, uh, and benefit from this conversation. But tell us about your journey to the big story. How did you get on here? Why, why Wilma George and uh, Kia Hodge? Well, I'm not sure exactly why I was selected to do this, um, but I know the reason I said yes is because of the person who asked. Um, Who's that person? <laughs> Miss Haida Joyles, well, rather, Mrs. Haida Joyles Selwood. And so I said yes because it's her. For me, probably, if maybe somebody else had asked, I would have tried to ease out of it and say, mm. but because she asked, I said, I'll do it to help her out. And knowing that she's a very demanding person, I, 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 get, I get the impression, Kia, you had no other choice but to I, say yes. I had no choice. <laughs> what, what, what subject areas uh, does she teach? She teaches social studies in grade 11 and grade 10. Is she a good teacher? Yes, she is. Why, why you say that? I love her because she takes her time out to deal with us when we don't understand a topic. So yeah, we get a one-on-one -on -one attention yeah, from her. That's very, very, nice. very useful. I always love teachers who would give that one-on-one -on -one, um, experience because it helps you to digest the information and understand the subject area much better. Great. Well, I'm happy for her. So what about the other teachers at Brigada Flax? How are they? They're, Apart from they're the storage? same way. Yeah? Yeah. You're not telling me the good stories <laughs> and hiding the bad ones. I'm not hiding anything. So is there anything that you're not comfortable with at your school? Mm, I won't say that, no. Wow. I have nothing. BFEC sounds like a, a good school to send my child, etc. That sounds good. Now, as we move into this discussion, we'd like to hear more about your activities and so forth. But how is the, the school gelling with the community from your perspective? Um, I would say that we have some work to do in that area. Um, and perhaps it's an issue in all communities. Um, we do need the community to be more involved in um, the progress of the school um, in terms of support, especially when events are happening. We, we need to see the, the community there and present. We also need to see our parents um, more involved at, at school. We do have those that are there, but what often happens is this, the parents that you actually need at the school need to be present and seen Sadly, those are the ones that you do not see. And so we, we do have some work to do in that area. I checked out the BFEC Facebook page. Okay. And I noticed that the overarching goal is to create a comfortable school climate to promote critical thinking, mm -hmm. academic development, and progressive attitudes for all students. Tell us, do you see this happening on the ground? Yes. Give me one evidence of that. You hinted to some a while ago, but I want to hear something else. <laughs> it was a question. Yeah, what are teachers doing at your school to help with your academic development? Apart from the one-on-one -on -one and very caring uh, teaching styles. Mm. Do you think that the teachers are 
developing themselves as well and staying abreast of their yes, they are. subject areas. Yes. So you don't have teachers who are guessing? No. No. <laughs> so they, they themselves are developing themselves, they're training so that they can better train you. Yeah. Is George, is she speaking the truth? I, I would hope so. <laughs> 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 I would hope so. Um, I think individually each teacher um, does his or her part to yes. stay abreast as to what's happening in education and so that we can better be able to impart knowledge to our students. Um, I think what's being hammered a lot also from education as we do the different workshops is that it's important that we build relationships with our students. I am presently a homeroom teacher for 10B and um, I love them very much. They are challenging to some degree. Um, I think sometimes it's difficult for them to draw the line between homeroom teacher and English teacher. But um, for the most part, you know, I, I love this group of students. They're energetic, um, they're very enthusiastic, they love life. Um, they're a great group of students and I'm learning a lot from them. And so I think if we are willing to learn, um, not just in terms of um, what we can gain academically and to pass on to our students, but if we are willing to learn from our students, it also helps overall in creating a comfortable climate in our school. That raises a question in my mind. Would you say students at BFEC have a voice in the school, or are they told to keep their views to themselves? Um, I would say that they do have a voice. I think that most teachers um, in the classroom setting especially, we are very open to discussions. We like to talk about what's happening in the news, um, what's current um, in politics, in education, in sports. You know, I think we're open to, to hearing from our students. Um, we perhaps can give them a bigger voice, perhaps by um, setting up student government and you know different things like those. Which again, I believe it's in the works. It's going to happen, um, but we are readily willing to hear from our students. I didn't plan to shoot myself in the foot when I asked that question because here you have a student, Kia Hodge, right here on the big story. Obviously, she's been given an opportunity to share her views on what goes on at, at BFEC. So. That it is true that students have a voice at the FEC. Yes, you do. Uh, what happens if you have an issue and you go to the principal or teacher? How, how, how is that experience? Well, they take care of the, um, they take care of the situation and we can, we, have, we can talk to them. So they allow you to hear your views and they, they give you a balanced take on it. Yeah. That sounds good. We're going to go to a break, but when we come back from the break, I expect to hear uh, from both of you, your most positive experience at the FEC so far. I don't know what it is, but in the meantime, you have some uh, thinking to do. Let us hear what is your most positive uh, experience. The big story continues in just a moment. We are, of course, discussing uh, issues, not really issues, but life at the FEC. And so far, it sounds good. The big story continues in just a moment. Welcome back to The Big Story with me, Sean Rose. Uh, we are looking at the Brigada Flax Educational Center's media outreach for this uh, edition, and we have teacher Wilma George and student Kia Hodge, and they've been sharing some very interesting views with us so far. Now I would like to ask, what is your most positive experience so far at BFEC as a teacher? Um, well, I would um, like to answer that question by answering it in two parts. Um, when I think of positive teaching experiences, I think of my students. I think of those that you really feel that you've been able to reach and that you've been able to help and you've seen growth and progress, not just academically, but in terms of as a student, they seem more confident um, about what they're able to do in writing and speaking, um, just to help them to make positive changes, prepare them for life. Um, I'll mention here that I taught Kia in, let's say, eighth grade? Mm. It would have been second form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I taught Kia in second form, and um, she was a 
really good student, um, well-behaved, um, well-mannered. Um, but what really impressed me about Miss Hodge is her writing skills. She may not have been um, my strongest student, but when it came to writing the business letters, when it came to writing a good story, I did not have a student that could touch her. Wow, that, she that's was a solid impressive. foundation for mm -hmm. any career. Definitely. So um, when I look at her today and I see her in the debates and even her being on screen today <laughs> with me is really a, a joy to see her and I am certainly proud to have taught her. Well, you know, that, you segued right into my next question because I was <laughs> going to ask, when you look at students you have taught, apart from Kia, of course, mm -hmm. many of whom now hold various uh, key positions in the BVI workforce, how does it make you feel? old <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say it yeah. but honestly <laughs> it makes me feel old um, but I also feel a sense of accomplishment and um, I'm very much um, proud that I had a part to play in their development and so it's always a joy even when I travel back to Tortola or come to Tortola for a, a day trip and what's not and I see my former students you know I, I told my husband that sometimes I feel like I'm a celebrity with them, wow. you know, and I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> you know, so it's the students. They would be my most positive um, experience at BFEC. And I know I have a habit, sorry to, inter to interrupt, Go ahead. Of, of still calling my teachers Miss and Sir. Does that yes, happen? Yes, it should. <laughs> <laughs> it should happen. Yeah. You know, you do have a few students who want to now call you by your first name, but yeah. for the most part, most of them, it's Miss. Mrs. George, you know, so it's that good. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. And if I could um, also interject, this school year, um, for me so far, my most positive teaching experience has nothing really to do with the classroom, but um, like I said, I teach, I am the homeroom teacher for 10B, yes. and I had a birthday on the holiday, St. Ursula's. Yes, yes, in October. Yes, October yes. 19th, and when I came to class, um, school on the 20th, um, I was sitting in the staff room and another teacher came and said, um, Ms. George, Ms. Joyles and Ms. Eva needs to see you in the trailer. And so I'm like, okay, I, was like, I hope this isn't going to take long because this is my lunch time and you know, I have things to do. And you know, I'm going down to the trailer and I'm thinking, did I do something wrong? You know, it, is this about culture day? You know, so lots of thoughts are going through my mind. And the teacher goes into the classroom first, into the trailer first, and then I enter second. And the kids shout, surprise! Wow. And I was thrown a surprise birthday party, My you goodness. know. And so that was really exciting for me, and I was overwhelmed. And, I mean, it was, it was beautiful. It was Talk a Hawaiian theme, and yes, I wow. mean, so, definitely. That sounds better than a paycheck. <laughs> well, <laughs> it comes close. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Kia? What's your, your biggest moment at the FEC? Well, as I said before, I was a part of the school debate team. Yes. I took part in it um, and we came second. It was, int it was an in interesting period because it was not, it's not always easy to be in front of a crowd. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> so, yeah. It How did it help you, though? Oh, it helped me, like, say, if I have um, in class sessions and like I can settle it in a way. All right. Yeah. And if you have to make presentations like this one, yeah, though I it's know. difficult and you're nervous, you still can hold your own. <laughs> yes. Wow. So you would encourage students, other students to get involved? Yes, I would. It's, it's really a nice experience and I would like other people to do it and get involved. I understand you are in other, uh, you told me a while ago you were in the choir and other things. Tell us about your involvement in those other the school choir. extracurricular activities, yes. Uh, well, the school choir, with the school choir, we participate, well, we had a school concert okay. before and I took part in it. Well, every segment they had, I took part, I even did a solo. <laughs> Um, and we take part in Christmas concerts. Right. I've, I've seen you guys perform. I've yeah. seen that. I hope that we can take this choir and go beyond with it, like in competitions and what's not. What, what sort of competitions do you have in mind? Like to go abroad and sing against other schools and uh, like that, yeah. stuff like that. We're seeing a vision there. <laughs> yeah. That sounds great. So, so you can sing very well. 
I would say that, yes. Uh, <laughs> maybe she can do a little something for uh, us. No. <laughs> yeah, why not? What, we can't get an acapella from you? No. All right, who knows? Maybe something might come up in your mind and you <laughs> feel free to say, you know what, Sean? Yes, I have something I'd like to share. Are you happy with the campus? Is it a, a school environment that is conducive and suitable for learning? Yes, I like it because I like the size and how, the, how we know each other very well. This, actually, the school atmosphere is very friendly, and I appreciate that the student body is generally well behaved. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And additionally, our class sizes are small. So if you don't understand a topic, as I said before, we get one-on-one -on -one attention with the teachers. Wow, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. That's well, well put as well. But some people would say, oh, the primary school is close to the secondary school and so on, and that's distracting. Not necessarily, because... We, we are not allowed to go on the secondary, the yeah, primary, primary school compound. So we are normally blocked off and right. we don't have no business going over there. So That's right, that's right. It's not a distraction. Mm, yeah. That's very interesting, very interesting, very important point that you just made there also. Now, in terms of the school environment as a teacher, mm -hmm. are you happy with, with it all? Or is there room for improvement, which is probably natural in any... Uh, educational institution? Yes, um, I am happy with it. Um, maybe I should say content. I'm content with what we have yes. presently, um, but it, it doesn't mean that there isn't room for improvement. Um, there are some things that need some, some work, um, like our staff room needs to be a little bit more comfortable for our teachers, um, but in general, um, I think the school climate is a positive one. It's a good one. Um, we are looking for, for anything that the community, community can do to, you know, help to enhance our school, you know, so feel free to pour in with, you know, whatever you can get. Well, you, you just kicked one of my questions out the field like a football <laughs> going over the goalpost. But um, I was going to ask if you felt that the society is showing enough appreciation to the institution and to the school. Um, um, there are... They're doing their part, yes, but is there room for improvement? Yes. Can more be done? Of course. Yes. We do need more classrooms. Um, we are tight on space in terms of classrooms, and it would really help if we could get a, a building um, with additional classrooms. Oh, so you're looking you know, at so an, an additional wing. Yes, that's okay. what I'm thinking. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, apart from surprise about the parties, um, how, how, how did the, the teaching uh, community feel about the recently held Lion, Valley Song Lions Club Teachers Appreciation Dinner? I think it was very well um, received. You're a part of that group, aren't you? Well, but yeah, but I am a little <laughs> class. <laughs> because we're talking about the community involvement. No, and no problem, no so. problem. Um, I think it was very much appreciated. I believe that we didn't have one last year, and it right, was very sure. much missed. Um, teachers talked about it. You know, they're not doing anything this time. You know, so I think it was very much appreciated that it was done. Um, the ambiance in the center was, was really nice. The, um, it was a college band that played. Yes. Yes. Um, Wonderful entertainment. Did a yes. very, very excellent job. Um, so it was good. So kudos to... Uh, Lion Coralie George. Yes, and the other we definitely want to thank the, the Lions Club for um, putting on that event for the Virgin Gorda teachers, past and present. We definitely appreciate it. So I asked that question because this is where I'm going. Is there room then for more involvement of the community in this area? It doesn't necessarily have to be blocks and cement, but mm -hmm. other ways of. Oh, definitely, of course. Um, yes. I think showing appreciation to the teachers is. Uh, a needed um, activity and so when we feel appreciated we work better um, it's easier for us to want to do more in the classroom to do more for our students because we feel that the community is behind us they're supporting us they're standing behind us so um, definitely if other organizations in the community want to you know in some way show their appreciation for the teachers or even not it doesn't even have to be something specific for the teachers but right. if you just want to do something for the school right. um, that's appreciated even coming in to speak at assemblies to share with our students to talk to them to encourage them to motivate them all of that's important and it, it will help the school in general yes yes uh, what is your biggest challenge 
what, what do you think is your biggest challenge as a student at the FEC, Kia? The biggest challenge? Mm. It seems I like you have to search very hard. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the biggest challenge is studying for my subject because I have about nine. Okay. And it's like, we have a lot of work to do because yes. this is 11 grade. We have a lot of work to do and those stuff. Okay. So I, and I hope the group study is helping. That I have found to be quite helpful. Once you're with serious people. <laughs> I don't really like the group thing. You prefer to do I, it? Yeah. yeah, I prefer to do it by myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess it depends on the subject area because group study is good when you want to share on, on yeah. some issues and discuss them. So that's a fair point. What about uh, you, uh, George, as a teacher? Um, I think that when I speak, I, I perhaps speak for all teachers everywhere. Sometimes having resources readily available in the classroom would be our biggest challenge and our biggest, yeah, our biggest challenge in the classroom. Sometimes you don't have the things that you need to be able to do as much as you would like to do. So. And especially in this age of uh, information technology, right. advanced information technology, yes. it's difficult keeping pace with the students who are very internet mm -hmm. and, and tech savvy yes. and so forth. So mm -hmm. how is that going? Is that transition taking place? Um, somewhat. Um, some of us as teachers do try to use the technology in the classroom. But again, sometimes it's, it, it's not always available because we don't have enough. But um, we're doing our best, I believe. Great. Now, tell us a bit about your principal. A new principal, mm -hmm. new captain, uh, high expectations. Some people would have expe expectations all the way to Pluto. Um, <laughs> tell, 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 tell me, what is that like? What, um, what, is, what is that uh, principle like? Um, in, I keep saying um, but... <laughs> That's fine. In terms of our new principal, I think that she has very high standards and high expectations of us as teachers, um, as students, and I think even she has expectations of our parents and the yes. community. But I think that it's a very good thing. If we have high expectations, then it means that we are pushing all of us who are involved, parents, teachers, students, to reach to a certain standard. Um, if you set the bar, yay high. Yeah. That's as high as our students, our teachers will ever go. But if you raise the bar, I yes. believe that all of us will come up to meet it. And in some cases, we will even exceed it. So I think it's a very good thing that she has high expectations for um, our school. And so Great. I can appreciate that. Thank you very much. On that note, we will break uh, for uh, some advertisements. But when we come back, we're going to talk about the future of the BFEC from the perspective of teacher George and student Hodge. You're watching the big story right here on JTV. Much opinion and in-depth analysis. This has been my experience here, a very exciting experience here on this edition of The Big Story. I'm Sean Rose. Welcome back. And we have a teacher from the Brigada Flax Educational Center, Wilma George. That's Mrs. Wilma George. And 11th grade student, uh, Kia Hodge. And they've been telling us uh, some very interesting things about that educational institution. Now, my question to you, uh, Ms. George, is, or Mrs. George, what does the future look like for BFEC from your point of view? I think the future is very bright for BFEC. Um, in the next several months and even years to come, I expect that things are going to even get better. We're in a good place and I believe that we are only going to move to an even better one. Um, we have a lot of things in the pipeline. Yes, tell us about things those. Things that we are um, hoping to see come off, like we have a parent involvement day that is going to be coming up sometime this month where we're going to be asking parents to come in and spend at least one class period in their child's classes. And so we're really hoping that we see the parents come out and be a part of this event. We also have our upcoming annual speech day, which, will, which we usually celebrate the students who do well academically and otherwise. And um, 
our seventh grade students, the incoming students, will not be a part of the um, prize giving, but our other students who have been here will be receiving prizes for their academic um, excellence. Oh, that's great. We also have a band concert, a Christmas concert. Um, I believe this is much anticipated. It's our first maybe in a very, very long time. Okay. Um, and of course, as you may or may not be aware, we have finally gotten our band program at BFEC together. Yes. And so we're very much looking forward to um, hearing from our band students. Um, we're very excited about our Is this wind instrument? Concert. Because I don't know BFEC has a wonderful steel band. Um, is this I believe it's going to be a mix of, oh, I see. of everything. Right, right. Um, yeah, it's going to be a mix of everything. So we're excited about that. We're going to have the choir singing. We're going to even have teachers are going to be doing a number. Um, so it's going to be an exciting time, and we do hope that we will have the Virgin Gorda community come out and support and, and be a part of it. We also anticipate that we will see our Minister of Education there as well because he had said if I'm not mistaken, that yeah. he would like to see this come off. Okay. And so we hope that a special invitation is going to be sent to him and we expect to see him in an attendance. Well, I don't know what's going to happen at that uh, particular concert, mm -hmm. but I know from my recollection, mm -hmm. the students outdid the teachers in football recently. <laughs> well, yeah, somewhat. What, um, what, the teachers are not fit? What's going on over there? <laughs> No, we have some fit teachers, but I guess all of us did not go on the field. Uh -huh. um, some so of you us were outnumbered? Who... No, we weren't un outnumbered, mm. but our, our soccer players are very, very skilled. Um, as the students? These, yes, the students are very skilled. These are students who play as a team professionally for the BVI, and so they challenged us on the field, and um, so, what you know, we the, take our loss. What was the final result? You know, it was five to... Five goals to two? Nil. Oh! oh. <laughs> wow! Um, that was a sound beating. Yes, yes. But like I said, you know, but it, it goes to show that at BFEC we have very skilled players. Um, students that are not only doing well academically, but in the sporting um, area, our students are doing well. I believe that we are undefeated so far in the territory yes, in and the um secondary school competition yes and so forth. we have been doing very well in the football in the soccer area and, and that's a very good comeback after um having to admit defeat that's, that's wonderful okay. um you mentioned something a while ago uh, in the, the the parents involvement day is mm -hmm. that what it's called yes what's good how how do you respond to parents who say but i have to work i can't get up get, get time off well so we on. understand that um it's a working community we, right. we recognize that but we're only asking you to come in for at least one hour during the day. So this is critically um, and important. Even if it's not the full hour, if you can yes. give us at least 30 minutes, 45 minutes, we just want our parents to come in and sit in your child's class, be a part of the class. Um, you know, it's, it's a means of giving support yes. to the teacher as well as the students. You know, your students, your children will know that, you know, my mom or my dad is in my corner. I have them there. They're showing their face. You know, I think it matters and it, it, it counts for something, and so we're asking the parents to please be a part of this as much as possible. Kia, tell us a bit about your goals, the goals you've set for yourself academically and uh, as far as uh, your career options are concerned. My goal is to graduate from BFEC with honors so that I can qualify for a government scholarship. Yes. When I leave school, I intend to pursue a degree in social work. Mm -hmm. And currently, I have a GPA above 3.0, and I'm working hard to maintain that. Wonderful. Um, and I'm also making sure that I do all my assignments, I turn in work on time, and I'm always present at school. You're a very diligent student here. <laughs> but why social work? It's a very interesting choice you've made. I like to deal with children, mm -hmm. and when I was small, I used to go with my work. She's, a, she's I used to go to work with her. She's yeah. a social worker right now. So, like, seeing her doing that every day. That's your mom? No, she's my aunt. Oh, okay. So, okay. yeah, I like the feel. Uh -huh. and I would like to experience. Mm. And I've been told when you have a passion for something, it's the best uh, area to pursue. So you think you'll do well in, in this particular yes, I will. field of work? Well, all the best with your, your career goals, and I do hope that you achieve those goals you've set for yourself. Thank you. I know you're preparing for CXC, and I hope that is going well also. Yes. Uh, how can the Virgin Gorda community, Teacher George, and all stakeholders in the territory 
better assist educators to improve the standard of education uh, as well as the social, cultural, and economic status of these Virgin Islands? How can you really help? Because as you said earlier, mm -hmm. you see a number of the students you've taught um, in key positions in the workforce. So you're contributing to the economic development of the territory mm -hmm. as a teacher. And we all should, uh, to, should be cognizant of that. But in terms of helping with the educational advancement of the territory, we know this is a community effort, not just mm -hmm. a teacher. What do you require of us? Well, I think in terms of the wider population, I think it's important that we support the initiatives that are um, coming on the table in terms of education. We may not always agree with everything that's being done, and sometimes it may seem like it's, it's quite a bit happening at once, and maybe in part it could be, but I believe that the initiatives that are being put forward are for the best interests of our students, and so I believe that as a community we need to support the initiatives as much as we possibly can. Not saying that we can't have a critical eye, because I think it's important that you know if we think that something can be improved, we should say something about it. But as much as is possible, we should support the initiatives. Don't fight the system per se. Um, support it as much as possible, and where you can give a critical um, review and you know provide solutions and answers to helping to make the situation better do that but don't fight the system and even where parents are concerned the same thing I think is important for us as teachers we need you to support us as teachers not fight us um, at home when your child comes home and they say XYZ come in and find out what exactly happened hear our side of the story hear our perspective sometimes it's not exactly as was conveyed by you know our children sometimes they can embellish the truth and so it's important I believe that we come in and you know hear from the teachers hear from the administrators talk to us um, we want to feel that you are supporting us and that you're not fighting against us I think that that is important and critical if we're gonna move forward and as we move forward to the end of this particular edition of the big story Kia you have any special shout out for your student uh, friends at BFEC. Nice. I want to shout out the whole of 11B. That's my <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'm sure they've been they're very, they're very proud of you because I think you did a splendid job here uh, bringing to us your perspective on what happens at BFEC. And George, are you, are you pumped up? You said that the future looks bright. <laughs> It is. I think it's a bright future at BFEC, and I am hoping, God's willing, when my children, my three children, <laughs> um, enter the doors of BFEC, it's going to be a really, really promising experience for them. I expect it to even be better, much, much better than what it is right now. Let me thank you on behalf of JTV and the wider Virgin Islands community for uh, braving the storm and coming on to the big story to discuss these issues. You've done a, a splendid job. You've done a remarkable job. And I want to thank you for watching. This has been one of my favorite editions of the big story. It has not been an easy one, as you can tell. Uh, it's not easy coming on and discussing these issues and walking that fine line. Uh, stay tuned for another edition of the big story when we'll bring you more opinion, more analysis. And who knows, you, you just may hear something that you've never heard before right here on The Big Story. I'm Sean Rose. Thanks for watching.